confusion abounds today concerning demons and the occult powers of darkness due to a lack of serious Bible study. Now the Word of God is the only authoritative textbook on the subject we need in order to gain a true understanding of its nature. All other sources have their origin in the pit and must be handled with the utmost of care. And I cannot possibly overemphasize to you the reality of demonic and satanic influence that is being exerted today. A reality that is consistently being overlooked and or played down by preachers who are supposed to know better. Now the word occult means that which is hidden. Occult writings and teachings deal with the evil side of the supernatural. In stark contrast, the Bible, which tells us of the goodness of God and the grace of God, is open. The Bible contains knowledge that is to be proclaimed openly and to everyone that will listen. But the point many fail to understand is that the Bible is also a supernatural book containing 66 books written by 40 Holy Spirit guided authors over thousands of years. And its subject material covers the ongoing battle of good versus evil, but from God's point of view. Now, God the Father, God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, along with the heavenly hosts, are routinely discussed in our churches. But for some weird reason, people just do not attach the same level of reality or credibility to their evil counterparts. Now why do you suppose that that's true? I believe the answer lies in understanding. If I were the devil and possessed the level of supernatural power that the Bible shows him to have, I too would spend much of my time persuading people that <laughs> I don't exist. His agenda has been well served by staying behind a cloak of superstition and secrecy. Hence, the occult designation given to his plan and program. Now, in order to try to expose him and what he is up to, I want to delve into what the Bible teaches about the last days and the involvement of Satan, fallen angels, demons, and the global elite with a fresh look at the roles they ought to play. Let's first establish, though, the present location of Satan and his angels. First, I want to call your attention to Revelation chapter 12, where we learn in verse 7 that war will break out in heaven. Satan and his angels will be defeated and cast out of heaven down to the earth. Then, and only then, during the last part of the tribulation period, will they be restricted to earth and denied further access to heaven. Their consignment to hell and the lake of fire, that's going to occur later. So let's get it clear, Satan is not ruling in hell now. And he'll never rule in hell. Hell is the place of punishment. Okay, there's no Satan ruling in Forget all that. That's hokey nonsense. The still future event of Satan being cast out of heaven may be what the Lord referred to in Luke 10.18 where he said that he beheld Satan like lightning falling from heaven. Remember, God the Son is not confined by time. Therefore, a future event to us is in the now for him. All right. At the present time, Satan and his hordes of fallen angels freely travel back and forth between heaven and earth while pursuing their own evil plan of someday ruling over creation. Yet, God continues to grant them the privilege of access to his throne. Why? Well, we're not given any specifics, but it may be that God is handicapping the contest between himself and Satan in some way by granting uh, concessions, such as allowing him to be the accuser of the brethren, as we read in Revelation 12.10. Something of this nature must be true, because God could have destroyed Satan and his angels long ago. Now, it is fairly plain from the conversation recorded in Job chapter 1 and the actions of Satan during the temptation of Christ in Matthew 4 that Satan's entire viewpoint is antagonistic, and he desperately wants to be worshipped as God. By giving him enough rope to hang himself, Almighty God is patiently looking to the day when all of the devil's excuses will have run their course and the matter will come to its end. Forever settled. Forever. So that no one in the future might ever again get the notion that they can be God. Now, of course, there is no chance whatsoever that Satan will emerge as the victor. The Lord Jesus Christ forever settled that matter on Calvary's cross. When he 
died for the sins of his people. Satan is a defeated enemy. But as long as the sands of time continue to flow through God's hourglass, he will continue to struggle, and we, those still living on earth, along with God's angels, will have to continue to deal with him and his gang. Now, it is extremely foolish to believe that Satan has no human followers, especially in the global elite levels of our society. Increasingly, more and more people openly admit to being members of Satan's church, just as the gospel message of Jesus Christ continues to go forth and captivate the souls of men, so to the occult message of Satan continues its evil work. The gospel redeems men from among the spiritually dead, while the occult works to blind their eyes to its message. The power of Satan is enormous, and he utilizes that supernatural power to full advantage through the vast organization of his fallen angelic followers. Now, neither Satan, his angels, or demons are omnipresent, and only God possesses the attribute of being everywhere present at the same time, past and future. Therefore, you got to keep this in mind, put your thinking caps on here, it's statistically and logically improbable that any of us have ever encountered Satan personally. Now, some preachers have said that if we were to see him, he would probably be standing behind a highly regarded pulpit somewhere. The reason for this is found in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 to 15. Let's go there and read that. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 to 15, where we read the following. But such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works.